Hi guys and dolls, how are you? Um, I'm going to jump right in because right in, I want to tell you how the day went and if I don't tell you now while it's fresh in my mind, I may lose this information, okay? Um, so for those of you who are subscribed, thank you so much for being subscribed. I appreciate you. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the little bitty L, uh, bell, ugh, bell icon, okay, to be notified of future videos. All right, so what happened today was I got there about 8 o'clock or so. Um, you want to get there early, especially if you live in an area where there's a lot of traffic. You want to make sure you leave your home as early as possible. It's better to be late than, I mean, on time instead of late. My brain still has medicine in my head, so bear with me. I'll probably be, my speech will be a little worse than usual, so have patience with me. Uh, what else? So we got there around 8-ish. And then, obviously, I'm going to cut to the main parts, right? Um, everybody comes and talks to you eventually. You get to know all the nurses and the, you know, the anesthesiologist and your surgeon comes to see you. And the people who did a nerve block came to see me. And they came to see me first. And then they left after they explained everything. And then they came back with all of these, their... Um, needles and things that they needed to, to use to do a nerve block on my leg. So I'm just going to share all of this with you so that if you have to go through it or anybody you know has to go through it or they choose a nerve block, this is how it's going to go down. Um, so the purpose of the nerve block is to make sure that when you wake up from surgery, you don't feel like you've been hit by a bus and a train at the same time. And so they inject there's multiple places they can inject for the leg for me they injected behind the knee which i was not really digging that and i thought the one in the thigh was going to be a piece of cake well not exactly that one hurt more than the one in the knee even though they had given me a light sedative i wish it was a stronger sedative because that didn't feel good and you could see them working the needle you know through whichever part of your body they're working it through you can see that you know they're they're trying to get access to the nerve I suppose and so you can see it on camera you can watch on the computer monitor because they're doing like a kind of like a similar to an ultrasound because they're looking for you know they're checking out your anatomy on there to make sure they're in the right place anyway so light sedative um, I wish it was stronger the one behind the knee not a big deal it takes them approximately I'm gonna guess at between a half an hour to 45 minutes to complete the one injection because they want to make sure they're in, they they check out your anatomy um, as much as they can and they they take their their time because they obviously don't want to do irreparable damage to you okay so it take it took a while um, to do it and then so the one behind my knee I cannot show you but the one in the thigh you you'll see the black and blue and I'm gonna try to show you in a discreet manner where I'm not revealing anything that I should not be revealing um, I mean I'm wearing more than what some women wear on the beach so it's not like I'm gonna be flashing you or on purpose or anything like that but anyway um, let me give you a, a brief synopsis for people who are popping in for the first time. What is she talking about? What, what procedure for what, what? Okay. So last March, March 2nd, I had hand surgery because of severe arthritis issues. And then March 31st, I slipped, I was, I was cleaning carpet. My right foot slammed forward. And I mean rushed forward like it was a race. It just flew violently forward. At the same time, my body was spinning. So I sustained a spiral fracture um, of my tibia, which is basically your shin bone, and the fibula, which is kind of catacorner aside it. Okay, so I snapped both of those. In addition to, proper word is fractured, okay? Anyway, um, and also fractured both sides of my ankle all of that at the same time and I got to hear my bones break so that's how the original injury happened that was a year ago and I still had um, a tremendous amount of pain because of all of the hardware the pins the screws the rods I had a ton 
ton of, med um, of metal in there. Bear with me, I can't talk. A ton of metal in there and we got it taken out and hopefully that will relieve a lot of the pain. And then of course with the weather, it got worse because barometric pressure change in the atmosphere causes drama. We've had rain like almost every day. Uh, wow. Okay. So, and I have chronic illness. I have fibro. So between all of those things not working in my favor, it was, it was a nightmare. So today basically got the metal removed. He went in there and did a arthroscopy where he removed tissue that was, um, damaged from arthritis. He did a scope, put a scope in there and cleaned it all out and, um, removed all of the hardware. So all of that was done today. And, but I wanted a nerve block because I don't want to feel like I've been hit by a bus, a boat, a train, and everything else when I get out of surgery. Despite the meds they give me, I still feel like death warmed over. Let's just bypass that whole thing and let's get a nerve block. So that's what we did. Um, so I'm going to show you to the best of my ability. i take you out of here. And um, I'm going to show you to the best of my ability what we're talking about. So here is the... Here is the... the the catheter in the actual uh, leg tissue and it is I can actually feel it so if I were to lift that up which I'm not going to but the the tubing goes down here and I could actually feel that it's still in place because I a couple times I think I accidentally pulled it out which you do not want to do and it releases medicine slowly over a period of three days okay I am also wearing a thing like a crossbody purse and I'll explain to you what that is as well so it releases the medicine sorry about that um, it releases the medicine in a gradual process and so as long as that catheter is in place it is called a Q ball it has a a controller that you can my doctor wanted it on eight and I could actually go higher than that I could go up to 12 if I needed to it gradually like I said it gradually releases so this it looks like a remote control it's got a plastic here so I can just push that forward open it up and I could um, either make the dial to minus or plus to decrease or increase the medicine okay so Here is the cue ball, all right? Looks like a Christmas ornament. It's starting to get a little soggy-ish, which is really good. That means the medicine is going in there pretty well. Um, it is called ro ropithecane. So usually anything that ends with cane is for pain. Um, so yeah, it's called a cue ball. And it stays, this will get mushier as each day goes by because the medicine will be gradually, obviously, being sent to that leg, okay? So I wear the crossbody little bag here that it sits inside of, okay? And then this is the quotation marks remote control, which it, oh, and you popped open. That's not cool. There we go. It's easy to close, so I just close the plastic on it. Um... Because I have to wear it for three days, it's going to be interesting because, you know, I can't lay the way I want to when I go to bed. I cannot flop like a fish. I can't lay this way, that way, this way, that way. I can lay on my back and I can lay on my left side and that's pretty much it. But I will pay the price to have reduced pain. You know what I mean? You got to make sacrifices for what you want and that's just the way it goes. So this has a really, oh, that's something totally different. I'm going to say it has a really long cord. That's my mic. That is not my cue ball. So that's, um, then they did, oh, I don't know if I showed you the black and blue marks. It's just two little black and blue marks on my leg from when they did the injection. That one hurt more than the one behind the knee because they went a little deeper on that one and kind of moved it around a little bit. And yeah, that wasn't fun. So that's the story there. And then eventually I went in for 
surgery once I was relieved when all that was done I did prior let me go backwards I did require they require a COVID test and they gave us two choices you can either have it up the nostril or you can have them swab the back of your throat I opted for the back of the throat because I really don't need a q-tip or up here I just don't dig that feeling they don't go that high but it's it's I don't like it so let's do the throat and be done with it you get the same type of swab when you have a, a strep test um, like strep throat okay they do a, a culture of the back of your throat okay so it's, it's similar to that just stick your tongue out and cough and I'm not gonna do it because that looks creepy and weird um, but anyway you stick your tongue out and you cough and <coughs> you know they go back there and get whatever they need so anyway back to surgery day so they did the um, nerve block and then eventually I got wheeled into surgery um, went into the OR I don't even know what time it was but went in there and I hopped over to the OR bed and I remember the last thing I remember her saying was okay I want you to put this mask over your face and do three deep breaths for me so I did that to the best of my ability and then I remember her saying let me try to remember uh, I'm going to put some medicine in your IV and that was it. I was done. I don't remember anything else. And the medicine that they put into your IV, if it's Versed, which they use a lot, I don't know if it was Versed, but Versed has the same effect. It basically gives you short-term memory loss. So you don't necessarily remember anything after they wheeled you to the OR. And in some cases, the medicine they give you works so fast that by the time they, because I've seen my friend under the influence or whatever they put in his IV to sedate him, right? Got him out of the room, down the hallway, turned, by the time they turned down to make a left into the second hallway, lights off, he was done. Because I, I was talking to him, he stopped responding, he was done. And that particular surgery was a knee surgery and he had an epidural. And when you first hear that, you're like, epidural, I'm going to be awake. Oh my God they're going to sedate you so well you're not going to know nothing about nothing I, I still wouldn't want to sign up for it but I saw them sedate him really well I mean prior so he doesn't have a clue when they put the epidural in when they took it out you know he don't know nothing about that so the medicine basically makes you forget um, what happened prior to your surgery and in some cases even after you're struggling to remember you're like uh okay so it went really well for those of you who have to have surgery I don't want you to panic I don't want you to freak out I don't want you to spaz because let me tell you something medicines are the best thing in the world and by the time they sedate you if they have to sedate you and one time I did have to be sedated for surgery my blood pressure was almost the top number was almost 200 and the bottom number was well over 100 also that's called potential for a heart attack or stroke the nurse was freaked out she said, you have got to try to calm down. I said, I'm trying. Well, they must have gave me something to calm down, and it takes that blood pressure and <sighs> drops it. So medicine's your friend. Um, you're going to calm down whether you want to calm down or not. They'll give you um, sedatives, you know. Um, and then once you get in the OR, you're minutes away from the medication that they put in your IV that's going to knock you completely out. You have no time to be nervous, scared, count down. Some people count down. They'll say count backwards from 20 you might make it to 20 to not nah, for 19 and not nah, is all you're gonna get out um, the medicine is wonderful so there's nothing to spaz about freak out about I did freak out a little bit prior to surgery a few days prior but the day of today I was super calm it's like I told someone else it's a it's a eerie calm that just kind of washes over me and I'm just like I just want to get it done and medicine's your friend it is your friend you will not you the medicine will override your fear your anxiety your depression your sadness the medicine will override all of that and then you have your surgery you don't even know you're having your surgery because you have left the building and then when you wake up it's done it's all done okay so I had three surgeries last year one surgery this year I hope I'm done with surgeries and I know how good those medicines are and how well they work so don't freak out don't spaz out you're good you're good okay all right you guys so just want to give you an update by the way I will I will be doing the cue ball for three days 
and then I'm allowed to take my bandages off after three days, take the catheter out, and I can let water get on it after three day, you know, at that three day mark, but I'll have to pat it dry really, really, really well. And um, I'll, you know, I'll tell you what happens after that. And recovery, I'm not on weight bearing at all, not whatsoever. But as time goes on, I'll have to read my papers because I have a whole stack of papers that the hospital gave me. But I can do weight bearing eventually as my body allows that to happen. And then like 50% weight bearing. And then if my body permits it, full weight bearing. But I know how I am with the fibro. And so I have to use extra precautions to make sure that I don't do too much too fast. Okay. So there you go. There you have it. That's what happened. Like I said, I wanted to tell you while it was fresh on my mind. You guys take care. Love you. Bye.